This is the Music History Today podcast for July 19th. On today's show, Mike Tyson and Joan Jett make history in a very superstitious way. Moving Out moves into Chicago and the Beatles cry help. First up, though, on this date in 1913, Billboard released the first music chart called Last Week's 10 Best Sellers Among Popular Songs, which is a really long title for a music chart. Byron Harlan and Arthur Collins took the first number one spot with the song Melinda's Wedding Day, a classic. In 1939, Jack Teagarden recorded the song Aunt Hager's Blues. In 1958, manager George Treadwell of the Drifters replaced everyone in the group with members of the R&B group The Five Crowns. Ben E. King joined the group a little while later, and at that point, the group became a huge hit. In 1966, Johnny Rivers recorded the song Poor Side of Town, and Frank Sinatra married actress Mia Farrow. In 1969, the Spencer Davis group broke up. In 1971, Roger Daltrey of The Who married model Heather Taylor. In 1974, David Bowie finished his Diamond Dogs tour. In 1976, Deep Purple broke up. Also in 1976, the roadie for the Allman Brothers band, Scooter Herring, received a 75-year jail sentence for being the guy who supplied the drugs for the band. Band leader Greg Allman testified against Herring. In 1977, Steve Martin performed dueling banjos on The Muppet Show. In 1985, Joan Jett became Mike Tyson's good luck charm when she called him before a fight that he ended up winning. He then insisted that she call him before every single fight. And the first time when she didn't call him before a fight, his upset lost against Buster Douglas. So, maybe there's something to this whole superstition thing after all. Who knows? Also in 1985, not superstitious, the film The Legend of Billie Jean with the theme song Invincible by Pat Benatar that became hugely popular in the 80s premiered in movie theaters. In 1994, Rick James was sentenced for assaulting two women. In 2000, Who album producer Shel Talmy, who produced their album My Generation, put the master copies of that album up for sale on eBay for $500,000. The band bought the master copies and used it to put out a deluxe CD called My Generation Deluxe Edition. In 2001, Mariah Carey appeared to suffer a mental health crisis during a surprise appearance on the TV show MTV Total Request Live. In 2003, musician Angelo Pagan married actress Leia Romini. Also in 2003, Course of Nature guitarist Mark Wilkerson married actress Melissa Joan Hart. In 2013, Pearl Jam started their North American tour by playing at Wrigley Field in Chicago. In 2014, Nine Inch Nails and Soundgarden started their co-headlining tour. Singer-actress Naya Rivera married actor Ryan Dorsey. And Adam Levine of Maroon 5 married model Behata Prince Lou. In 2017, Luis Fonsi, Daddy Yankee, and Justin Bieber song Despacito was streamed for the 4.6 billionth time, breaking the record for the most streamed song of all time at that point. And in 2019, the pseudo-live action movie of the Disney animated classic The Lion King premiered. In classical music in 1941, the BBC started playing the letter V for victory in Morse code at the beginning of its broadcasts. That code in musical form is also the four-note opening of Beethoven's famous Fifth Symphony. And in 1942, Dmitry Shostakovich's Seventh Symphony had its American premiere. In theater in 1951, the musical Two in the Isle opened on Broadway. In 1952, the musical Paint Your Wagon closed on Broadway. In 1958, the musical O Captain closed on Broadway. In 1980, David Bowie performed in the play The Elephant Man for the first time in America. And in 2002, the musical Moving Out premiered in Chicago before going to Broadway. 
The musical, based on Billy Joel's songs, brings about the new era of Broadway musicals based on artist and record label songbooks. Albums that were released on July 19th include in 1966 when Manfred Mann released Pretty Flamingo. In 1972, John Cale released The Academy in Peril. In 1977, Elvis Presley released Moody Blue. In 1979, Mike Oldfield released Exposed. In 1982, Donna Summer released her self-titled album. In 1989, Alex Taylor released Voodoo in Me. In 1990, Mother Love Bone released Apple. In 1991, Carla Olson and Mick Taylor released Too Hot for Snakes. In 1993, Deborah Harry released Deprivation. In 1994, Dave Edmonds released Plugged In. In 1994, same day, The Rolling Stones released Voodoo Lounge. In 2001, The Cars released Shake It Up and Other Hits. In 2005, Carly Simon released Moonlight Serenade and Iggy Pop released A Million in Prizes, the anthology. And in 2011, Limp Bizkit released the Icon series. Singles that were released in the UK on July 19th include in 1968 when the Beach Boys released Do It Again. In 1993, Tears for Fears released Cold. Billy Joel also released River of Dreams and Madonna released Rain on that day. Meanwhile in America, in 1952, Hank Williams Sr. released Jambalaya. In 1954, Elvis Presley did a twofer. He released That's Alright and Blue Moon of Kentucky. In 1965, The Beatles did a twofer. They released I'm Down and Help. In 1968, The Moody Blues released Tuesday Afternoon and The Hollies released Do the Best You Can. In 1972, the Doobie Brothers released Listen to the Music, and in 1990, Phil Collins released Something Happened on the Way to Heaven. Before we continue, we'd like to tell you about the Music History In-Depth podcast, where we go in-depth on the history of some of the events from the daily version of the Music History Today podcast. The Music History In-Depth podcast drops new episodes every Tuesday in audio and video form wherever you get your podcasts. We also have the Music Halls of Fame podcast, where we honor a year in music along with a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, along with who we think should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Plus, we honor a different museum, Walk of Fame, or Hall of Fame. The Music Halls of Fame podcast drops every Thursday in audio and video form wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to the Music History Today podcast. Artists who were born on July 19th include the legendary Mr. Brian May of the group Queen, Bernie Leadon of the Eagles, Kevin Haskins of Bauhaus, Alan Collins of Leonard Skinner, Keith Gutschow of the Grateful Dead, Alan Gorey of the Average White Band, Commander Cody of Commander Cody and his Lost Planet Airmen, country music disc jockey Billy Parker, singer Vicki Carr, singer Sue Thompson, Country music singer George Hamilton IV, reggae singer Pop Can, rapper Baby Irwin, dance music songwriter and producer Scotty Granger, country music singer Tim Faust, singer Matt Maltese, Ben Swade of Crown the Empire, singer Mr. Easy, guitarist Phil Upchurch, Buster Benton of Willie Dixon's Blues All Stars, Robert Flynn of Machine Head, Singer Gabrielle, singer Russell Allen of Trans-Siberian Orchestra, Dids Hammond of Dirty Pretty Things, folk music singer Karen Dalton, blues guitarist Little Freddie King, vaudeville singer Butterbean, Kevin Haskins of Love and Rockets, drummer Ged Lynch of Black Grape, Michelle Heaton of Liberty X, and jazz pianist Eddie Brunner. Artists who unfortunately passed away on July 19th include composer Samuel Bessler, who passed away in 1625 at the age of 50. Composer Hieronymus Graydon Thaler passed away in 1700 at the age of 62. Composer Jean-Baptiste Lollet passed away in 1730 at the age of 49. Composer Christian Tagg passed away in 1811 at the age of 76. French horn player Frederick Nicholas de Vernay passed away in 1838 at the age of 72. 
Horn player Heinrich Domnitsch passed away in 1844 at the age of 77. Organist Johann Wilms passed away in 1847 at the age of 75. Violinist Will Cook passed away in 1944 at the age of 75. Composer Max Ettinger passed away in 1951 at the age of 77. Composer Jean-Roger Ducasse passed away in 1954 at the age of 81. Singer and television producer Barry Wood passed away in 1970 at the age of 61. Country music singer-songwriter Lefty Frizzell passed away in 1975 at the age of 47. Violinist and also professor at the Peabody Institute from 1916 to 1976, Louis Cheslock passed away in 1981 at the age of 82. The tenor singer who sang bilingual renditions of the Canadian National Anthem O Canada at Montreal sporting events, Roger Doucet passed away from a brain tumor in 1981 at the age of 62. Composer Marco Tasevic passed away in 1984 at the age of 84. Composer Gino Negri passed away in 1991 at the age of 72. Violinist Simone Goldberg passed away in 1993 at the age of 84. Pianist Rudolf Ferkusny passed away in 1994 at the age of 82. Big band band leader Sidney Lipton passed away in 1995 at the age of 89. The man nicknamed the king of high life music, saxophonist E.T. Mensa, passed away in 1996 at the age of 77. Composer Antoine Tisney passed away in 1998 at the age of 65. Gospel music singer Judy Clay passed away in a car accident in 2001 at the age of 62. Folklorist for the United States Library of Congress Archive of American Folk Song, ethnomusicologist Alan Lomax passed away in 2002 at the age of 87. Folk music singer Dave Carter of Dave Carter and Tracy Grammer passed away from heart issues in 2002 at the age of 49. Bassist Andy Hummel of the group Big Star passed away from cancer in 2010 at the age of 59. Composer Karen Chachaturian passed away in 2011 at the age of 90. Violinist and teacher at the Prague Academy of Performing Arts from 1964 to 2015, Vaclav Snitty passed away in 2015 at the age of 87. Composer and orchestra leader of the Dean Martin TV show, Van Alexander passed away in 2015 at the age of 100. Singer Haran Kolkak passed away in 2017 at the age of 62. Singer Barbara Weldens passed away in 2017 when she was electrocuted while on stage during a performance in France at the age of 35. And singer-songwriter Q. Lazarus passed away in 2022 at the age of 61. Next time on the Music History Today podcast, it is July 20th when in 2017... Lincoln Park lead singer Chester Bennington passed away at the age of 41 on his best friend Chris Cornell of Soundgarden's birthday. Thank you very, very much for listening if you're listening on the podcast or if you're watching this on YouTube or Spotify video. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share this podcast. And if you like this podcast and you want more of our podcasts, then I invite you to check out our Music Halls of Fame podcast in either audio or video form. It drops every single Thursday. You can listen to the audio version of this podcast on Apple, Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, CastBox, wherever you get your podcasts from, all under Music History Today. You can also watch the video version of this podcast on either YouTube or Spotify Video, also under Music History Today. Our Facebook page is Music History Today. Our website is jamaritaniamedia.com. And our Twitter is twitter.com backslash Music History Day. Thank you very, very much for listening or watching.